Hi, welcome back. I'm scientist Kate. This is grade three, weather and climate, lesson 3.5, comparing climates part two. For this lesson, you will need a pencil or something else to write with, page 50 from the science investigation notebook, and digital access to the world weather handbook. If you need digital access to the world weather handbook, you can ask your teacher. But if you don't have digital access, that's okay, keep watching because you can play along with me. I'm really excited because in today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about local weather in the place where I live, which is Seattle, Washington. I'm even wearing my Seattle shirt. You can see it has the Space Needle and Mount Rainier, two things that people think of when they think of Seattle. Are you excited for science today? I know I am. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, welcome back. We've been studying climates all around the world. Do you remember all of these places we've studied? We've been to Akumal, Mexico, Anchorage, Alaska, Dakar, Senegal, and St. Petersburg, Russia. All of these places had different climates and all of those climates were really unique and interesting. Remember that we judge climate based on the temperature, and the precipitation over a long period of many years. And climate happens in patterns that repeat, repeat themselves year after year after year. So when we think about climate, we shouldn't just think about faraway places. We should think about our own local climate too. So how would you describe our local climate using, relang using language related to the seasons? So remember that when we talk about seasons, meteorologists don't talk about like, spring, summer, fall. They talk about hot and cold seasons, and they talk about rainy and dry seasons. So I want you to think about the climate where you live and use the sentence stems I've put on the screen to talk about what the seasons are like where you live. So you can see this first sentence stem says, where I live, there is a warm season during blank and a cold season during blank. I want you to think about what months you would use to fill in those two blanks and then tell me. Great. Now look at this next sentence stem. Where I live, there is a rainy season during blank and a dry season during blank. What months would you use to fill in those blanks? Today, we're gonna to be talking about Seattle, Washington, which is the local weather where I live. You might live in a different place, but we're gonna talk about Seattle today, and hopefully you'll get a chance to study your own local weather with your teacher. So let's take a look at this piece of data. This is a bar graph, just like all of the other bar graphs we've been studying, and look at the title of the graph. What is this showing us? It's showing us temperature in Seattle, Washington. So we're only talking about temperature right now, not precipitation. Take a look at the bars. Use your finger to trace the outline of the top of the bars. Yeah, it goes like this, Ooh, almost like a hill. Have we seen that pattern of climate and temperature before? Yeah, we definitely have seen that pattern where it looks like a hill. So it starts out with low temperatures, the temperatures get higher in the middle of the year, and then they get lower at the end of the year. So do you see that there is a warm season right here in the center of the graph? What months would you say are in the warm season of Seattle? June, July, August, and September are the warm months in Seattle. You can tell because the bars are really high during those months. All right, can you find the cold season in Seattle? See if you can name some months that would be in the cold season here. There's two spots on the graph that show you the cold season. At the beginning of the year in January and February, and then at the end of the year in November and December. So I put January, February, March, October, November, December as the months of the cold season. Awesome. Now, we're going to be looking in the World Weather Handbook. Remember, I told you that you were going to need a digital copy of this book. 
So can you find a place in this reference book that has a temperature similar to Seattle's, like their temperature graph over the seasons looks sort of the same as ours. So right now I want you to pause the video, open up the World Weather Handbook and see if you can find a city that has a similar temperature related season to Seattle. Okay, go for it. I'll meet you back here. All right, welcome back. Were you able to find a city that matches close enough to the average high temperatures in Seattle? If you were, great. If you weren't able to access the World Weather Handbook digitally, that's okay. I'm gonna challenge you right now. So I've picked three cities out of the World Weather Handbook and I want you to compare them to Seattle. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Cape Town, South Africa. Take a look at the pattern of temperature in Cape Town. Does it look similar to Seattle or different? Yeah, Cape Town looks different because Seattle has that hill in the middle of its bars. But what happens to Cape Towns? Cape Towns has like a hill or like a little valley. It's almost doing the opposite of what Seattle is doing. Hmm, interesting. Let's try another city. This is Phoenix, Arizona. That's where my brother lives. What do you think? Yeah, Phoenix has a hill like Seattle, right? So it gets warmer in the June, July, August months, but at the beginning and end of the year, it's a lot cooler. But take a look at the actual temperatures that are being recorded. Look at January. January and December at the beginning and end of Phoenix's year are the coldest months. What temperature is it showing? Yeah, it's in the high 60s. It's almost up to 70 degrees. Take a look at Seattle. In the coldest months, does it get up to 60 or 70 degrees? No, it's down in the 40s. So Seattle's weather follows the same pattern as Phoenix, but Phoenix's temperatures across the whole year are much, much higher. So let's check out another city. This city is Okinawa Island, Japan. Compare it to Seattle and see if you think it's similar. Yeah, Okinawa is similar in a lot of ways. It definitely has the hill, just like Seattle does. But look at the actual temperatures. Are they close to Seattle or are they different? Yeah, they're much more similar to Seattle's actual temperatures. So in June, July, and August, when those bars get up to like, mm, looks like around 80 in Okinawa, when we look in Seattle in June, July, and August, we're getting up to the high 70s, almost 80. So Okinawa is a little bit warmer, but it's closer to the actual temperatures of Seattle. So of these three cities, which one would you pick to be the most similar to Seattle? Cool. Are you ready to move on? Me too. Now we're gonna look at precipitation in Seattle. So we're talking about the total amount of rainfall for each month. Check out this data. What do you notice about the pattern of precipitation data in Seattle? Yeah, if you trace the bars, it starts out pretty high, a lot of precipitation in January, February, and March, and then it dips down in June, July, August, and then it goes back up again in October, November, December. So the months that it's warm here, June, July, and August, right there in the middle, we don't get a lot of rain. But in the months at the beginning and end of the year when it's cold, we do get a lot of rain. So instead of having a hill like we did for temperature, we have a dip for precipitation, which is really interesting. There you can see the dip right there. So the months of June, July, and August would be our dry season. And the months of January, February, March, October, November, December, oops, would be our rainy season. 
All right, can you find a place in this book that has precipitation related seasons similar to Seattle? So remember, we're looking for that big dip in the middle of the year. I want you to pause the video right now, go check out the World Weather Handbook and see if you can find a city that matches the pattern for Seattle. And then meet me back here, all right? I'll see you in a few. All right, welcome back. Did you find a city in the World Weather Handbook that had similar precipitation data to Seattle? If you did, awesome. If you weren't able to access the World Weather Handbook, that's okay, because you know I'm gonna challenge you now. All right, I have three cities and we're gonna see which one matches the data for Seattle. And I mean, it's never gonna perfectly match because every place has some differences in their climate, but we're looking for the same pattern and around the same temperatures. All right, here we go. City number one. I brought back Okinawa, Japan, because that place had a similar temperature to Seattle, so maybe they have similar precipitation. Take a look at these two cities and tell me, do you think that the patterns match? No, they definitely don't. Okinawa has the opposite precipitation from Seattle. It starts out low in January, and then they get a lot of rain in May, June, and July, and August, and then it goes back down in November, December, in those cold months. So does that match us here in Seattle? No, it doesn't. All right, let's try another city. This is Phoenix, Arizona. Wow, check out that precipitation data. What do you notice? Yeah, those bars are super short and stumpy. That's because Phoenix, Arizona is a desert. It is very hot and very dry. So looking at this data, does it match what we see in Seattle? No, not even close. They barely get any rain throughout the year, but Seattle gets a lot of rain during the cold months at the beginning and end of the year. All right, are you ready for the third city? I picked Tarifa, Spain. What do you think? Yeah, this one kind of matches. It starts out in January in both places, pretty rainy, and then it dips down during June, July, and August, and then it rises back up in October, November, December. Does that match what we see in Seattle? Yeah, so we could expect to have similar precipitation in Tarifa, Spain that we have in Seattle, Washington. Awesome, you did a great job comparing those graphs. Very proud of you. All right, so after we recommended Creek Island for the orangutan reserve, we received new data for January and it showed that January was much colder than August. Do you remember that? Take a look at this data to refresh your memory about the three islands we've been studying. You can see that the temperatures on Creek Island in August were up in the 80s, 90s, even some measurements up into the 100s. So we know Creek Island is very warm in August. What about the temperatures in January? Study those temperatures and tell me what you think. Yeah, those temperatures are a lot chillier, aren't they? Those temperatures are down in the 40s, 50s, 60s. So we know that after we recommended Creek Island, maybe we've discovered that January might be too cold for the orangutans there. Now, remember I told you you were gonna need notebook page 50? Here's where you can pause the video, grab it, get a pencil, and we're gonna complete page 50. So let's look at that data again and see if we can figure out more about Creek Island's weather in the years ahead. So, Pause the video, grab notebook page 50 and something to write with, and complete questions one and two. When you're done, meet me back here, and we'll move on. Go ahead, I'll see you in a few. All right, welcome back. Thanks for completing page 50. I hope that helped you think more about the decision we make about the orangutan reserve. Remember that over the past few weeks, we've learned a lot about weather patterns and how to use them to predict the weather. Do you remember this image? It shows how if we take several years and put them back to back to back, we can see the repeating pattern of seasons. So warm season, cold season, warm season, cold season. 
And we might see dry seasons and rainy seasons happening in the same pattern too. Some of you may have heard people mention climate change. Have you ever heard this term before? I bet you have. It's a really important issue. Climate change means that the climate or the typical weather based on many years of data is changing around the world. It's getting warmer in some places and colder in others. In some places, extreme weather like this and natural hazards like hurricanes and things like that are happening more. Now, now that you have acted as a meteorologist and you know how to use data to describe climate, you can pay attention to the weather here and in other places and decide if it seems to be the result of climate change. All right, that's it for our lesson today, but I have a new special segment. Y'all, I have been getting letters from students who want to ask questions about weather and data and orangutans and everything else. So I've decided for the rest of the lessons, I'm going to do a segment at the end called Ask Scientist Kate. Woo! I'm really excited to take some letters from you, the third graders at home. Okay, so this week's letter is from Edith. She's in third grade and she lives in Seattle, Washington. And look, check it out. She sent us a picture of herself with her dog, Lily, who is so cute. Okay, here is Edith's letter. She said, Dear Scientist Kate, what do orangutans eat? I know mangoes grow in hot, wet places. Do they eat mangoes? I'm asking because I like to eat mangoes. Sincerely, Edith. Edith, great question. I really love to study what animals like to eat because that's really fascinating to me. And you're wanting to know about mangoes. So let's find out. Edith, I had to call up some of my biologist friends because as y'all know from the very beginning of this program, I don't know that much about orangutans. I'm learning right along with you. So I called up a biologist friend of mine and said, hey sis, how are you? I was just calling to see if you could give me some information for my friend Edith. And my scientist biologist friend said that orangutans actually love to eat fruit. And their favorite kind of fruit to eat is the durian which is a fruit we commonly don't really eat that much here in America because it's a tropical fruit that grows on the other side of the world. And get this, the durian fruit is supposed to have a very smelly, like cheesy, garlicky taste, which is really interesting. So I would really like to try that fruit, even though it sounds a little weird. This is an orangutan eating a durian fruit. You can see that it's really spiky and it grows on trees where orangutans live in Borneo and Sumatra. And so they take them down and they peel them open and they eat the meat from inside. And the meat is like not real meat, but like the meat of the fruit, the soft, fleshy, yummy part of the fruit. But they don't just eat durians. They also eat mangoes. Woo, eat it. Yes, I'm so excited to tell you that orangutans do eat mangoes. And here's proof. Here is an orangutan eating a delicious tropical mango. And Edith, I love mangoes too. Now, I wanted to know if they eat stuff that isn't fruit. And my biologist friend said that yes, they actually eat leaves and they eat something called tender shoots. And tender shoots are like when a plant is just growing out of the ground or when a tree is growing like new leaves and they're really soft and they're not like hard and crunchy. They're nice and like soft and juicy that orangutans like to eat that. And Edith, your question made me have a question. And that question is, I see orangutans being shown on TV and cartoons and stuff, and they're always eating bananas, right? Like monkeys eat bananas. And so do orangutans eat bananas? And my biologist friend said, scientist Kate, they sure do. They love bananas. So thanks so much for sending your question, Edith. And on the next lesson, I'll have another um, letter to scientist Kate from another curious, brilliant third grader. All right, that's it for lesson 3.5, Comparing Climates, part two. I can't wait to see you for lesson 3.6, but until then, stay safe and stay curious. Adios.